How's it going? In this video, we are pretty much going to keep the same project that we have before. It's going to look the same and everything. I'm just going to refactor it to engineer it a little bit better. Now, one quick note, if you looked back in my previous videos, control shift I to the console, you would see that I was getting a bunch of errors here and they were saying, what was it? Um, uh, error reading property device um, undefined or something. So I've been back and forth on this and for whatever reason, for the first few animation frames that I was loading, it was um, the, the device and the pipeline were just undefined. I don't know why. I guess, anyway, I guess the initialization functions sometimes take a little bit longer and I was trying to be strict with the, the async await and all of that, but for whatever reason, it was just not working. And I actually tried another version where I was even stricter on the async and it still didn't work. So here's the solution that I found to that. If we just go to the renderer class, there's a number of different ways that we can wait for these things to be defined. Just right down the bottom. Okay. so. Here, anywhere I work with a device, because a device could be undefined, I could just put a test here. And what this test does is if the device is undefined, it just skips that line of code. However, we still get a problem because some things create other things. Does that make sense? Um, for instance, this command encoder has been created but then it just gets a little weird and we'll find that we have uh, unpredictable follow-on errors. So just the simplest catch-all is I put an early exit test at the top because the device and the pipeline were throwing undefined errors. Um, I just say, well, if neither of these, oh, sorry, if either of these is undefined, then just exit the function early. And that's fine because the next animation frame will call it, and by that point, the, the things might be defined. So I just wanted to talk about that. That's one thing, but the topic of today is bind groups. So if we open up the shader, we'll see that all of these resources are bound to the same group. And that's actually a problem, because what I want to do is just bind these things once for the whole frame. The whole frame is going to use the same uniform data. The whole frame is going to use the same object positions. It's the material that changes each time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these bits and put them out into a different section. So I'll call these group one, and I'll just reset the binding numbers. So I'm going to set it up so that I have two different bind groups. I'll bind the, um, I'll call this the frame group because it's bound once per frame. I'll bind that at the top of the draw function. And then for the individual materials, I'll bind the material group. Okay. So that's all I need to do in the shaders. That's all set up, ready to go. I can go back to the, let's go to the material actually. So what I want to do is I want the material to have its own bind group. And this will define all the resources which are used by the material. Now, in order to create a bind group, I need to specify which layout it is to conform to. So I'll actually create the layout for the material bind group in the renderer, because we need to have a single layout that everything conforms to that's needed by the pipeline creation and so on. So I'll accept this as an argument in the creation. 
Okay, so then I go through the whole initialization function and do what I need to do. And there are two really important parts, the image view and the image sampler. After we get to this point, we can then create the bind group. So I'll go through and I'll actually go back to the renderer and right back. Here we go. So again, what I was doing is I had two separate bind groups with everything in there. That's not necessary. So I'll just grab one of those bind group functions and take that over here. Okay, so I'm saying, all right, let's make our bind group. Tell the device to create one, take in the bind group from the argument, and then for thing number zero, that will actually be this one here. So at binding zero, we are referencing our image view and then at binding one we're ref referencing our sampler okay so there we have it each material is going to create a bind group with the appropriate resources which conforms to the material bind group layout okay so i'll just close that down and I'll go back to the renderer and show how we're going to use this. So let me just close this for now. All right, where are we? Okay, so over here, I'll just take a copy. What I want to do, oh, oh not that one. What I want to do is at the top of the pipeline, bind the the frame bind group and then that'll be binding group zero then binding group one will be if I look at the triangle material grab its bind group there we have it and then for the quad material again I'll bind that to group one and there we have it that's how we use it so let's keep going I'll close down the draw function and I'll pop right up to the top and redefine a bunch of things. Okay, so here I have this bind group layout and I'm going to make two of them. So I'll have a layout for the frame and a layout for the material. And well, I'm not going to have this anymore. But the frame will have its have its own bind group. Okay. So there we have it. That's the basic materials, basic things we're going to be working with. Go down to the initializer and I'm going to break this out into a few steps. So um, I'm going to set up the device and then here before I create the assets, because each <clears throat> material needs to know which bind group layout to conform to, I will create those um, there. And then I'm only making one bind group for the frame. So I'll just rename that function. And just let me quickly check. Do I have? Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, I think that's fine. So let's have a look at that. So we set up the device. <clears throat> Depth buffer resources, that's fine. Okay. So I'll make a function. All right, so I'll just go in here, grab the bind group layout that I created before and duplicate that. So the first one I want is the, the frame group. 
and that will just be the uniform buffer and the storage buffer. Binding 0 and 1, there we have it. Good, so I'll just close that down. And then we'll have the material. And those resources will be the texture and then the sampler. So we can get rid of the um, storage buffer and reset those binding numbers. So the texture is binding 0, the sampler is binding 1. OK, so this function will have created both of the layouts which everything needs to conform to. So then in the make pipeline, I'll just specify that the first layout is the frame, and then the second layout. Alrighty. Okay, we're cooking with gas. So well, that is to say we're in motion, we're, we're doing it. So then um, down here, I'm setting up my materials. And they're saying, hey, well, which bind group are we going to conform to? So you can just pass that in there. That looks, that looks okay. That looks all good. And then finally, we'll go create bind group. So we're making the frame bind group that's conforming to the frame group layout. And just the same as before, we're not taking those resources. We're just taking the uniform buffer and the storage buffer, the object buffer. Okay, so then when we come to render again, right up the top, just after we start the pipeline, we will bind everything that we need to draw the frame. And then later on, as we come to it, we'll bind the individual materials. Now I've got one error, I guess. What is that? Ah, oh. <laughs> alrighty, fine. Uh, line 221. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay, so fingers crossed that should be working. Let's give that a shot. We'll go npm start. Okay, and then we'll just go down and reload it. And it's working. It's working. But hopefully, hopefully you can, oh yeah, no errors. That's excellent. Hopefully you can see that although this essentially does the same stuff, well, not really, because we reduce the amount of stuff that we're binding because we're not rebinding the same um, buffers. But anyway, hopefully you can see that although this visually does the same stuff, it is better engineered. Anyway, so that'll be it for now, I guess. Let me know in the comments what you would like to look at next. Uh, like I said, I'm sort of stuck. I'm sort of busy with the Vulcan stuff at the moment, but it does go on my list of things to do. One thing I'm thinking is if we look in the distance on that checkboard, we're getting some, you know, some weird aliasing things. We're getting, um, yeah, we need to make MIP maps. So I think MIP maps, I'm thinking, would be the next thing to look at. But let me know if you, yeah. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Thank you uh, for hanging out and yeah, have a good one. Alrighty, bye.